Uh, John Burr, you want to kick us off? Sure, happy to. <clears throat> Jaron, you suddenly become one of the uh, senior statesmen on this group in terms of experience with the team and leadership, all those things. Just what have you seen from the additions to the team, the young guys, just how this defensive line is coming together? Oh, yeah. Uh, it's been great, you know, this whole camp to see, you know, the young guys come along and, you know, to learn and soak everything in. This is actually, I think, one of the best groups we had uh, as far as young guys as a whole. Everybody's come in in shape, coming in ready to work. They're learning. Uh, we're going hard every day. I'm really excited to see how this is going to turn out. Jessamyn McIntyre. Sorry, I'm trying this from my car, so I apologize. Um, what have you seen specifically from Alton Robinson? His ability to rush off the edge. Uh, it's been great to see, you know, for a guy, you know, who's pretty, I'm not going to say undersized, but, you know, not your normal type of Leo guy, because especially in today's game, you know, those guys are kind of bigger as far as, like, taller. But, you know, he's brought a great rush off the edge. He's still learning. Um, he's still young. And um, I think he's going to be a well all-around player, you know, when he gets down. He learns really fast and really well, and that's key, especially when you're young in the NFL. And just one more, um, as a defensive lineman, you're probably used to the noise, and I know it's going to be adjustment with the yeah. even noise level on the offense and defense. What have you guys been doing to adjust to that? Uh, well, I think, you know, one of our first mock games, you know, we pumped some noise in there. Um, but, you know, nothing is going to compare to the 12s, especially playing in Central Link. Um, it, it actually gives you another, like, boost of energy. It sends chills through your body. Um, I'm uh, curious to see how it's going to be. I think, you know, personally, from my opinion, it probably feel like practice, you know, with some noise. But, um, you know, at the end of the day, you know, we got to go out there and play. Thank you. Bob Kondota. Um, yeah, hey, Jaron. We, we haven't um, had a chance to talk to you really since you resigned in March. I was, I was just curious if there was much of a decision for you with that or if it came together pretty quickly to, to resign with, with Seattle and just sort of how you, how you felt about how that process went. Um, you know, it was new for me. You know, it felt like uh, <laughs> you know, college recruiting all over again. But um, I didn't want to leave Seattle. Uh, I felt, you know, I had unfinished business here. Um, just compared to the year I had last year. But, um, you know, I just sat back, relaxed. You know, I wasn't going to wait long. And, uh, you know, team had faith in me. You know, he gave me an opportunity to have another chance by resigning me. And uh, it was pretty easy, you know, that I wanted to stay here. You know, I, I love it here in Seattle. So, you know, I, as soon as we got the deal, agreed on the deal, you know, I came in and signed it. Brady? Hey, Darren, I uh, wanted to follow up on the, the issue of the crowd noise. And I mean, it sounds like from, from what we understand, there has to be one level that the team keeps it at, that the home team keeps it at throughout the game. So it's not like you can turn it up when the defense is on the field, turn it down when the offense is on the field. I'm wondering, do you, do you, does Pete Carroll seek out the opinion of guys like you on defense in terms of how loud you want it to be? And, and just what's your thought on what that level should be at? <laughs> no, nah, I'll just work here. So I don't get to make that decision jokingly. But um for me, I I would actually like it to be kind of loud, you know, just to get that feeling back. I don't want it to be too quiet because then I think it's going to be awkward. So, you know, I think we'll make it as loud as, you know, as, as we can get it without being just annoying loud. Hey, could you, during the two uh, mock games that you had at the stadium, uh, not the one this, this past weekend, but the two at the stadium, could yeah. you tell the noise level being any different than those two? Um, I think the first game was louder. You know, the second game was a little bit more toned down. But um, overall, it's kind of surprising because I didn't even focus on it after a while. You know, as soon as we started playing, I was just locked in on playing, which I think, you know, that's how it's going to be for most of our guys anyway. Well, thank you. No, thank you. Michael Sean. What's up, Jay Reed? Uh, a lot of you guys worked out with Cliff uh, up at Tracy's uh, yeah. offseason up on the D-line. How do you think that, that helped getting, uh, not just you, but everyone else, the young guys getting that advice from not only a vet pass rusher, but someone who knows specifically what Seahawks pass rushers need to do to be successful? Yeah, uh, I think it was great, you know, 
Cliff was definitely one of the great pass rushers here in Seattle. And just to have, you know, one-on-one -on -one time with him or group time under the CDC rules was just, I think, you know, the best thing that, you know, could have happened for us. Because, you know, in this time we had to figure out, you know, how we were going to stay in shape, uh, how we were going to work. And, you know, missing that time for minicamp, you know, uh, early on like OTAs, I think it was very clutch to get in there. Because, for one, you got a player who knows exactly what's going on and kind of the system and how things go here in Seattle, especially with practice. So we just, you know, just kind of reiterated what we can do and type of drills we can do. And I think it was just very just clutch for us to do because we all came in in great shape. Everybody was in great weight and I'm ready to play. Pete's always been a real big on having like an outside guy who can slide in like Mike B was able to do, trust in Rasheem and guys like LJ to do that now. What about the like talent level, their skill sets allows them to be successful as edge guys who can always come inside? Um, just that same fact that you said that they can play outside and inside, that means they're physical enough to play inside and quick and finesse enough to play outside. You know, I think that's some key because, you know, the more you can do, the more valuable you are. So, you know, we just really don't pinpoint a position of where anybody's playing. So if it has to be next man up, uh, we could trust him to go do that because he know what he's doing. Thanks. Matt Coffins. Hey, Jared. You guys won the lower end of the league in – sacks last year, I want to say 24th, 25th. Um, what did you make of that? How did that affect your guys' defense, and, and how do you see that improving this year? Um, you know, first of all, I think we're very hungry, you know, to come back and, you know, get to where we were in 2018. Uh, pass rush is key because, you know, you get more pressure on the quarterback, you know, you can kind of rattle them a little bit, you know, help out the back end guys that's doing their job. So, you know, we put a lot of emphasis on it this year, you know, especially that we need to get to the quarterback. And overall, without trying to do too much, you know, do it within inside the system. Um, every game is not going to be perfect. You know, there may be a game we don't have a set, but um, we're looking for guys to go eat, and guys to be hungry, and guys to make plays. You know, they mentioned the, the physical noise, you know, earlier just in terms of uh, – you know, pumping noise in the stadium. What about the, the mental noise, the media noise, when people were criticizing the defensive line, saying that they're not getting to the quarterback this year, this is a weak spot. Did, that, did you guys read into that at all? Did that matter to you at all? Uh, no, I, you know, I don't really get into that. Um, of course, we all see it. But, you know, at the end of the day, it's everybody's opinion. Um, you know, everybody has a right to say what they want to. But at the end of the day, you know, we're in here working hard, you know, trying to, you know, do what we can. You know, it's easy to say versus then when you're doing it. But um, so, you know, once again, you know, we're just going on the grid on every day, going on the grass, you know, working to be better. You know, I'm definitely working to pick it up. Corbin? Hi, Jaron. I know you participated in camp in the preseason last year, but how tough was it to get back in the swing of things after you had to serve that six-game suspension? Do you think that had any bearing on your production last year, particularly rushing the passer? Yeah, um, first, uh, I don't make excuses. You know, I could have came in, you know, done a way better job. But it's definitely – it was very different. For one, something I've never been through in my life. And for two, you know, to come in late behind the eight ball already. Um uh, I didn't want to say I I did I tried so hard not to over try you know but when you come in late you want to just be a factor to your team so much and um sometimes you got to let the game come to you without forcing it and uh you know I just got to bounce back out there years behind me now um that was then uh you know I'm in way just tremendous more better shape than what I was. I'm ready to go. I'm ready to get this fresh start, you know, starting out the season with a clean slate. And I'm just excited for this season because I work really hard, and I'm not going to let none of these guys down. Joe Green? Jared, what do you mean by unfinished business? Here in Seattle, uh, personally, you know, uh, it's a team sport, but, you know, personal goals I have for myself that I didn't reach. And um, I just want to be more of a factor on the defense. Um, I think we had a good shot, you know, to make it far in the playoffs last year, a great shot. And um, I just didn't want to leave on that note, especially the way the season went and uh, especially the way it went for myself personally. Um, it's just I did not want to go out like that, you know, basically with a bad taste in my mouth. So 
you know, coming back here and getting another chance with a great group of guys, with a great team. I think we have a great team right now. Um, you know, once again, I'm just excited. Uh, we got some great guys on the edge. You know, that's key, especially when you're rushing. And, um, you know, the season's going to write itself, you know, starting on the 13th where we're in Atlanta. Is it important for you to show yourself, show the team, show everybody that, that 2018 wasn't a one-off for you? Um, personally to myself, uh, I'm not trying to go out there and impress anybody um, that's out there watching or anything because I know what I'm capable of doing. But it's definitely key that I get back to that, you know, playmaking abilities that's still there, that never left. You know, nobody's perfect. No season is going to be perfect. Sometimes it's going to have a downfall, especially when you had so much production the year before. You're going to be a little bit more keyed on so, you know, now we got guys, you know, just around us that's going going to make plays and, you know, open up doors for everybody to make plays. And um, that's just the way it's going to go and I'm um, just ready to get to it. All right, we have time for two more. We'll uh, wrap up with Art and then Jackie. Uh, uh, Jared, did you have any uh... – of your family members or close friends impacted by COVID, and did you have apprehension about coming to camp because of that? Um, no. Uh, thank God, you know, nobody in my family was affected by COVID. Uh, my biggest ordeal was because I I had another child, so you know, I had him up here with me, and I sent him back because I wanted to play for one. I never even thought about opting out, and um. I just talk, you know, just trying to figure out ways, you know, that we can make it happen. So I just sent my kids back um, to Atlanta. And, uh, you know, I was just riding it out to see how it's going to go. It's been going great here in Seattle. Um, as far as testing-wise, we've been doing a really good job. Um, everybody's been protecting others because that was one of the main keys to make sure that, you know, we all protect, protect each other. You know, with you know, respecting our bubble rules and you know, protecting each other's family. So um, we're doing a great job with that. Ben doing it. You know, we keep doing it. I'm gonna bring my family back out here, and uh, yeah, I'm ready to see my my little ones. Jackie, you're up. Hey, Jim, um, you actually said you were a good job here. Now, looking at Puna Ford, he's going into year three this year. I'm just curious what you see in his development as we get into um, get ready for the season. Oh, it's very good. You know, each year, you know, I've been with Puna since he was a rookie. Um, he's grown every year. You know, and this year it just seems like he's way more comfortable, you know, into playing. Um, I see it when we're watching film. You know, he's very comfortable. You know, he's starting to learn more of the game. And, you know, we'll see, hopefully, or which I know and which I have full confidence that he's going to take that next step we need him to take. And, um, yeah, I mean, you guys will see for yourself. I mean, that's He's one of my favorite players that's on the team right now. And, of course, I, we go to war together on the inside. But, you know, he's he's definitely a key piece that we need. Jay Reed, thank you very much for your time. Appreciate All right, thank you. It's so funny seeing everybody on the cameras. <laughs> All right, we've got Chris Carson on his way up. We'll be here to see.